This week we'll learn how to use a tilt shift lens. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, we're gonna have a lot of fun bending light this week, so let's get started by taking a look at our question. And this one comes from Ricardo in Curitiba, Brazil. What is a tilt shift lens and how does it work? Well, tilt shift lenses are specialty lenses that look a bit wacky like this one right here. And you can do a lot of amazing things with a tilt shift lens. And so we're gonna look at three of the most common things that people use them for. So first, we're gonna use this lens to change the position of focus. Now this will allow us to have more of our subject in focus by changing the shape of our depth of field. I know, it's really cool. We can also use this shape changing technique to create images that look like tiny worlds. In fact, here's an image I shot of Chase Field here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I used a tilt shift lens. Now this building can seat 48,000 people, but if you look at this picture, it looks like a tiny little image with a little train set, but it's actually a normal size building. Well, secondly, we're gonna learn how to shift the lens to fix distortion. Now, if you've ever tried to take pictures of buildings, you've probably noticed that sometimes they look like they're falling over backwards. And here's a shot I took that illustrates that. This is just a house here in Phoenix, and it looks like the whole thing is about to fall over backwards. But using a tilt shift lens, we can fix this problem and get everything looking like it should. And we can do all of this without using Photoshop. Well, lastly, I'm gonna show you how you can create high resolution images by merging photos that you've taken using the shift feature of your tilt shift lens. So let's get started by taking a closer look at the lens itself. Now, this is a Canon tilt shift lens. It's a 24 millimeter lens and tilt shift lenses come in all different focal lengths. There are wide angle lenses and mediums and a uh, little bit longer lenses like an 85 or 90 millimeter and all different manufacturers make them. But we're gonna take a look at this 24 millimeter and it'll give you a good understanding of how this works. So to understand this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this from the top of the lens. So it's like you're looking straight down from your uh, camera. And the first thing I want to show you is the uh, tilt function. Now on the bottom of this lens, I'll spin this around here, you can see that there's a locking mechanism and so you can lock this or unlock it. I need to make sure it's unlocked and it's unlocked right now. And now I can tilt this lens back and forth like this and this is going to help us change the shape of our depth of field. It's really pretty cool. Now the other thing I can do is I can use a shift ability now on the side here, there's a little thing I have to unlock. I can lock and unlock that. And then when I do that, what happens is now I can shift this lens up or down. Now this is a really interesting thing and we'll show you what it does, but that helps us get those buildings to look uh, as they should. So the other thing that I wanna show you that is very important about a tilt shift lens, and I don't know if you can see these, but right inside here, there are these two little tabs and what these little tabs do is when I push this front one, it allows me to actually rotate this front part. And so I can tilt the lens in different ways. In fact, traditionally, uh, the uh, horizontal movement is called a tilt and the vertical movement like this is called a swing. It doesn't really matter, but if you want to get old school, that's what that is. And I can also uh, change how my shift works. And so if I'm shooting a horizontal or vertical shot, I can shift in the appropriate way. And so that's the basic movements of a tilt shift lens, and it'll really help us out. Well, now that we've seen the lens, let's head over to Studio A. And what I'll do there is I'm gonna teach you some of the basic principles of using this lens. And then once we know those, we'll go on location and put everything together. Well, before we begin, there's one very important thing I need to mention about a tilt shift lens, and that is as soon as you start shifting your lens or if you're uh, tilting your lens vertically like this, as soon as you do that, the built-in metering will not work. And so what you need to do is make sure you're shooting in manual mode and get everything metered with everything on your tilt shift lens lined up all at the default position. And once you have your exposure set, then you can start shifting and tilting and doing everything you need to do. And your metering should work just fine because you've already set it in manual mode. Well, let's start learning how to use this lens. And we're gonna do that by taking pictures of Brian Peterson's book. So let's get going. 
All right, well, let's talk about how we can use our tilt shift lens and specifically how we can use the tilt feature of our lens to change something called the plane of focus. Now, a plane of focus normally, I'm gonna use these two little index cards here to illustrate this. Uh, normally, the plane of focus uh, is very straightforward. So if we look back here, and I'll put this card back here where the image sensor is, and this is the front of the lens. Well, those are parallel, and so when we uh, have everything parallel like that, well, the plane of focus is going to be parallel as well. So it's going to come out, and if we took this right out and we had this image focused on Brian Peterson's name at the bottom of this book, well, what would happen is this bottom of the book would be in focus, and if we have shallow depth of field, well, the top is going to fall out of focus, just like we would normally expect. But what we can do is we can use the tilt feature of our lens to change this plane of focus. So no longer is it in the same, um, it's not parallel anymore to the image sensor. We can shift or tilt this lens over like this. And when we do that, things are out of whack. When things are out of whack, what happens is no longer is the plane of focus just uh, parallel like this. It actually bends over and looks more a little bit like a, a wedge. So what that allows us to do is now we can focus on the bottom of the book. And since this is more wedge shaped, well, actually, this shallow depth of field, this bottom, the, the back of the depth of field would actually be underneath the book. And that allows us to get the start to the very finish of this book in focus. Now, that might not seem like a special thing, but it is because if you're shooting rivers and lakes and things uh, from a, an airplane, stuff like that, you can get much more of your image in focus. And the cool thing is you don't have to stop your lens down, so you can shoot at a really wide open aperture. So let's do this, and I'll show you exactly how it works. Now, for this to work, notice my tilt is going left and right, and I don't want to do that. I want it to go up and down, so I'm going to spin the front of this lens just like this, and now I can move this up and down. Sometimes that's called swing instead of tilt, but we're just going to keep it and call it tilt. So the very first thing I need to do actually before I do this is take a normal picture. So I have this composed. So Brian Peterson's book is right at the bottom of the frame and the top of the book is right at the top of the frame. And I have set my exposure using manual mode. I'm going to take a picture and exactly what we would expect has happened, which is this is all falling out of focus. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this around and I'm going to uh, tilt that down just like that. And I'm going to recompose this image. Now, when you uh, do the tilt, you have to recompose just a little bit. And then I will focus this, make sure everything is nice and sharp. And it is. Now, take a look at these two images. You can see clearly that the first image we got exactly what we expected with the bottom of the book in focus and everything else falling out. And the second image, same exact aperture, same exposure, everything is the same. I just tilted the lens and you can see that we have everything in focus from the bottom to the top of the book. And that is awesome because now we can change the plane of focus to really creatively control what we have in focus in our scene. All right, well, the other thing you can do with this, instead of getting everything in focus, uh, you can do the opposite of that and you can make that sort of uh, toy train miniature uh, look that uh, I showed you earlier in the video. And by doing that, instead of uh, tilting this uh, to the right direction, we would tilt it in the opposite direction. So we would move it opposite of what we're trying to focus on. And so what we're doing there is we're taking this uh, plane of focus and moving it up. And so we get this uh, different angle here. And now when I take an image and I'll focus that. You know, it looks totally different. Now, it's not going to work on this book. We need to have something that's really large, and we need to be a little bit farther away from it. But that's how you get that uh, Toyland look, is to uh, go opposite of the correction that you're trying to get. Now, the nice thing is this rotates, so it doesn't matter if you're trying to get something that is vertical or horizontal. You can always rotate this around. And so I'll do that again. So we can rotate it, so we can tilt left and right, or we can swing up and down. Well, now that we know a little bit about the principles of how that works, let's talk next about the shift in a tilt shift lens. All right, now we're going to take a look at how the shift function of our tilt shift lens works. Now, to do this, I've created this gray panel. It's just a rectangle that I hung up here on the wall. Now, on the rectangle, you can see that we've attached some yellow lines here, and that's going to help us understand if anything is out of perspective from our lens. The other thing that I did is the, on the top of this gray panel, there are red X's, and on the bottom, there are blue X's, and just uh, right by the center line, we have red and blue, so you know exactly what we're taking pictures of 
and that's going to be really important here uh, as we go through this demo. Now, the other thing that I did is I wanted to make sure that the center of the gray panel is directly lined up with the camera, and that's why this camera is up so high. And by doing that, I made sure that the lens not only is aligned right with the center of this panel, but that the lens and the panel are exactly parallel. And that's going to make sure that I don't have any distortion on this uh, gray panel here. And that's really important if you're shooting a house or some other kind of architecture. The goal is to get the lens and the object to be exactly parallel to avoid any kind of distortion. Now to show you exactly what this shift is doing, I'm going to go over here to my camera and I'm going to hop up here on my uh, little box here. And I'm also going to turn on my live view. And then once I have that, we're going to actually record this demo right in the camera. So I'm going to hit record right now. And now you're watching what's inside the camera. And as I shift the lens up, you can see I can see all the way to the top and even above this gray panel. And as I shift the lens to center, everything lines up as it did before. And as I shift the lens down, you can see I can go way below this panel. And I'll shift right back to center. Now notice that when we're doing that, none of the lines are distorted. They stay exactly parallel as I'm moving my lens. And that's really an important feature of our shift ability. And to understand that better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this camera here and I'm going to take it out of parallel. I'm going to make it so it's looking up at our gray panel. And you can see that when I do that, everything becomes distorted. So let's do that next and you'll see why this shift function is so important for architectural photographers. All right, well now what I've done is I've taken my camera and I put it really low to the ground. This is more like what you'd be shooting if you're shooting a building outside. And the problem with that is now our lens is way down here instead of being up here parallel with the center of our gray panel. And what that's doing is it's going to cause distortion. And so these yellow lines, instead of being parallel, now they're gonna start shifting and this is gonna look like it's falling backwards. In fact, I've already pre-focused this and everything's ready to go. I'm gonna take a picture right now. Yep, and now when we look at this picture, you can see that it looks like we're watching the opening credits of Star Wars. Everything's just going off into space and leaning backwards. And we've gotta fix that somehow. And so to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to my tilt shift lens. And the neat thing about this tilt shift lens is that I can move the lens up. And as you saw before, when I move the lens up, what that's going to do is allow me to see more of the top of the gray panel. In fact, I'm going to take a picture right now. And you can see that we have so much of this gray panel, we have too much of the top. And so I need to take this camera and actually bring it down. And by bringing it down, what's happening is the lens is, is getting to be more parallel with the gray panel, and that is going to fix a lot of that distortion. Now, when I bring it down, it's, uh, we don't see enough of the panel, so actually I have to move back just a little bit. So I'm gonna move my camera back here, and I've already made some cheat marks on the floor here so I know where to put this. So now I have this down. I'm gonna line my panel back up again. And now, if you look closely, you can see that my camera is almost exactly uh, vertical like it was before. And so when I take these pictures, you can see that that distortion is almost completely gone. Not all the way, but it is a huge difference between the first shot, where it looks like everything is flying off into space, and the second shot, that most of that distortion is being corrected. Now let's take this principle and go out and actually shoot a house, and I'll show you how using this shift functionality here, you can really affect how your pictures look when you're shooting architecture. All right, well, we're here in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, and behind me is a very historic house, and I'm gonna shoot that just like I shot the gray panel in the studio. Now, you'll notice that I'm shooting at a low angle up, and when I take this shot, well, it looks like the house is falling backwards, and we don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift my lens up, just like we did in the studio, and now when I look through, this looks pretty good. I need to lower my camera, and now things are looking much nicer. So let me take a picture of that really quickly. Good, now to get the whole house in, I need to back up a little bit, just like we did in the studio. So I'll back up my camera, I'll compose everything, and I'll take the shot. Now, take a look at this before and after shot, and you can see that there's a huge difference in the way that the building looks. One looks like it's falling backwards, and the other one looks much more closely related to what we see in real life, and that's what shifting the lens will help us do. 
All right, well, I want to show you how you can use your tilt shift lens to get that sort of miniature look. And so what we're doing is right across the street here is Chase Field, the home of Major League Baseball's All-Star Game. It's a gigantic building that seats, I don't know, 30-something thousand people. And so what I'm going to do is before I start shooting and before I do anything with my lens here, I need to make sure that I set my exposure because as soon as I move my tilt or shift, well, the metering isn't going to work. So I've got my camera on manual mode and I'm shooting at 3.5. So let me just look out here and I'm gonna dial this in and it says one thousandth of a second is a proper exposure. Now, now that I have that, I'm gonna take my tilt, instead of going left to right, I'm going to make this uh, move like that so I can move it up and that's gonna be exactly the opposite of what I showed you for making sure you get nice depth of field and everything in focus. So I've got this tilted up and now all I'm gonna do is point my camera out here Okay, now lastly, we have another trick up our sleeves using our tilt shift lens, and that's to use the shift feature to get a high resolution image. And so to show you that, we're here in Studio B where we shoot all of our Adorama TV videos. And what I wanna do is I wanna see if I can get a picture that shows all three sets in one image. Now to do that, what I'm gonna do is I have my camera pointing to the product review set. And what I'm gonna do is I need to rotate my lens here. So I'm rotating it. So the shift is gonna go left and right. And now that I have that, I've already focused this, everything is good. I'm gonna take a picture of that middle set. And so I just took a shot of that and you can see that all we can see is the middle set and a little bit of the sets to the right and left side of that. But what I'll do is I'll shift the lens way over to the right. And now we can see most of the digital photography one-on-one -on -one set. I'll take a picture of that. And then we'll shift our lens way over to the left. And when I do that, now you get most of the how they do that set. And we have all three of those images. And now there's a really cool trick. We can throw that into Photoshop using Photo Merge and we can align those images. And when we do, without moving our camera, we basically have emulated a very high resolution shot because we have all those pixels packed into one photo. We can zoom in and out and you can see that this is a really high resolution image. And you can use that trick if you're a product photographer or an architectural photographer and you need to get more in your sensor than your camera physically allows. Well, thanks for joining me this week. If you have questions about photography, send them to me at askmark at adorama.com. And don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center for more videos and all kinds of articles about photography. Well, I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. What I've done is I've set up a book here. This is Brian Peterson's Learning to See, Creative, uh, Learning to See Creatively book. And I cannot talk today. Of the most common things that people, oh my gosh, what was I saying there? Make one of those miniature kind of train, uh, plane, um, what's it called? Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.